Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Today, we are continuing our journey to service all of our tractors so they're ready to go for this spring. In the last episode, we worked on our two planter tractors. We made relatively quick work of that. Now we're on to the big girls. Two of our three 9460Rs behind us, our big four-wheel drive tractors, need a full service, and one of them just needs a little bit done. Somehow, the weather managed to be even more enjoyable than the last time we serviced our tractors. It is 30 degrees, a slight breeze, I don't think I have enough clothes on, but we'll tough it out to get this done. At least it's sunny though. We gotta count our blessings. Every little thing we get checked off our list makes our job easier come planning time. Before we get too far along in the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned, these two tractors here that are in a row need a full service. This one does not need the oil changed. Just over a month ago, this tractor was actually completely disassembled in at our local deer dealership, having some head bolts replaced for a deer factory warranty type deal. Some of these 13 and a half liter engines are having problems with oil seeping through the head gasket because of those head bolts and then getting into the coolant. One of my first videos and not my best videos for the record on the channel is me kind of talking about one of these tractors and the problems it was having. The coolant reservoir was very obviously stained with oil. We took it in, they ran some tests, drained out the coolant, put new coolant in there. They tested it again after that season. There was still oil in it, so it qualified to have it replaced. I would imagine at some point in time that almost all these tractors are gonna have it done. Whether or not it's fully paid for, that's a different question. I know it's this tractor specifically because it's the only one we have with five remotes. The rest both have four remotes on the back. That one has four remotes and also that has a PTO. We're gonna fire this up and take it over. Should make quick work out of it. Battery on, door open. Took a little bit longer to turn over. Servicing these bigger tractors is about the same workflow as the smaller planter tractors. They just hold a lot more oil and the grease cirques underneath are located in much different places. Our 8R tractors with the 9 liter Powertech engine hold roughly 7 gallons of oil. This big four wheel drive and the rest of the four wheel drives all hold closer to 13 gallons of oil. Thankfully, we're only changing 26 gallons of oil total and not 39. That would make our project take a tiny bit longer. She's cold this morning. The seat lever's kind of broken on this one. It'd be a rough start to the morning if I crack the vertical tiller instead of the tractor. Looks like we're good there. We're good there. Okay. Out in the sunlight. We could just hook up to that ripper and go work some ground. I think we'd get stuck in about three minutes. It's a much bigger tractor to take down the road than the planter tractors are. Service time. Get our air filter changed out. Got our new filters conveniently placed here on the semi. Brand new one, courtesy of Mother Deer. These things are the trickiest to get on. After some finagling, got it back on. There's an art to it, I just don't know it. Now it just needs greased. Dad already blew out the cab. She's almost ready to pull a field cultivator. Don't get as messy watching someone else grease if you do what you do it yourself. Dad took his concrete money from front of the barn and put it over there in his driveway. That's what happens when you're the boss. We're lined up, we're gonna have to move it. We gotta move the tractor a tiny bit, that way that drive shaft spins around enough to move the greaser. These screens, we know we hit them.
It has to be lined up exactly perfect to get that grease gun on it. If you couldn't tell by how many times I had to roll forward and backwards. That I just got a lead foot and I moved too much. It's a good morning to be the one in the tractor, not the one on the ground. This one's done. That took about 15 minutes. Changing the oil is by far the hardest part of the process. And I wouldn't call it hard, I would just call it lengthy. This one needs parked out of the way so we can get the other two out. Find a nice place that's convenient. Pretty much anywhere it goes around here. That works. It sounds like Dad's already got the other one warming up. I'm trying to convince him to move this outfit back into the other barn, inside on the concrete. That way we don't have to be in the wind. I don't know if he'll bite on my offer though. Well, he did not take that offer. And wow, look how rude he is. He didn't put the steering wheel up. Can you tell there's a lump in the tire? I can. How warm is warm enough? We'll let it run for another 30 seconds, then shut her down. That way when I drop the plug in the oil, I don't scold my hand at the same time. It's cold, but at least the sun's shining. It holds 12 gallons of oil. You were shot for. Moving. Oh, there goes our shot. <laughs> this is the grain car tractor. That adds a lot of hours. It's at a thousand even on the dot. What are the chances? This one's a little bit easier to work with. It has a stop. And then, yeah. You can't lose the plug when there is no plug. These tractors might actually go a little bit faster because you can work on many different things at once. I'm watching the oil. Dad's cleaned out the air filters and Jeff's greasing the back of the tractor right now. We may be in and out of here in 30 minutes. Slowing down to a little trickle. A slow way to move 13 gallons. Let's see if we can locate an oil filter. Stay on this nice battery and clay tile. This looks about right. I think that's it. I always do my best to avoid having to blow out the cab. Pretty good at it. Sorry, Liz. Man, I still. We don't have to worry about it rusting right there. Drain the excess out. I had to hop in the truck and take a little break to warm my little appendages up. Cold enough that I couldn't feel my fingers. Which it's really not that cold, so maybe I'm just a little pansy. Only 47 more quarts to go. Might take a while. We probably need to start thinking about getting these seat tenders ready. Other than making sure the batteries work and they start, there's really not much upkeep for them. This pump is every bit as convenient as it is slow. Still beats carrying around the jugs. Dad and Jeff are just leaving to go get the other four-wheel drive tractor. We can get started checking off things on the list, grease it, get it cleaned out, change the air filter, and then worry about the oil once this one's done. 34 quarts. This is as fast as it's pumping. Slow. Honestly, we probably ought to turn the pressure up on it. It might pump a little faster. With the two 8R tractors taking about seven gallons of oil a piece, and then these two 9460Rs will be around 13 gallons. That puts us at about 40 gallons gone out of this 55 gallon drum, which surely will be enough to last us the rest of the season. These tractors actually don't burn that much oil. Here comes the last one on our list. So much for planning time. Big puddles and ice. This one's done. Ready to cultivate some fields. Actually, won't do any cultivating. It is a backup. <laughs> Give her a check over. Oh, 
and we're off. They're going to get started servicing that last four-wheel drive tractor. I'm going to take this one back to the main barn, get all the other tractors out, and we're going to calibrate the Green Star systems on all of them. We like to do that every year. Home sweet home. Like we did when we moved the RTK receiver to the Gator, we had to recalibrate the TCM. I'm not going to go over explaining what exactly that does, but we do do it every year on this. I can remember where it is. Oh, that's not it. There it is. Usually a guessing game. Setup, 3D TCM, calibrate. All we got to do is have a fixed point with the front axle, hit the calibrate button, turn it around, put the same axle in the same spot facing the other way, and you're good to go. Your calibration obviously is going to be determined by how accurately you place your front wheel. When it's soft out on the lot though, it's pretty easy to tell where you were. Line it up about where we want it. Perfect. And calibrate. Beep boop bop. Successful. But it's super accurate fuel cultivating. High precision job. I'm moving this one out of the way. We're going to do the 9460R and we're going to pull the two planter tractors out and do them as well. Shouldn't take me too long, but I'm not going to bore you with the process. You get the gist of what I'm doing. We get a little John Deere train going. We put the 8310R back in front of the Exacto Merch planner. I said last time that the next time we got out of the barn, it would be with the planner. I lied slightly. I got it out to recalibrate the TCM. It's good to go. When I pulled it back in the barn after calibrating it, it had connectivity to the satellites and was showing RTK status. And the minute it entered the door, all the satellites lost signal. So I guess this barn is also good at protecting you from the government. I'm gonna go grab the 8285R tractor and park it in front of this planner with the same goal we have with the exact emerge planner hoping that next time it comes out of the barn it's right there we can hook it up pull the planner out and be good to go these little utility tractors are kind of like the little fish that swim with the big fish that are the combines and clean them off it's kind of the vibe i get they're almost like little bodyguards if you're going to hit something in this barn we'd rather you hit these tractors than the combines dad knows a thing or two about repairing combine augers with the exception of this breeze now that the sun's been out for a little while, it's actually turning into a nicer day than it was about an hour ago. Still a little bit chilly for my tastes. There were actually a few days last planting season, surprisingly, that it was this cold outside when I was planting soybeans. And they turned out all right. So if it's this cold and the ground's dry, we'll probably be planting. I get nice and close to the wall. I probably should have done this tractor first so I had more room to work with over here. I was considering actually hooking it up to the three point and then the wiser part of my brain started talking and said you probably shouldn't hook it up until you're going to hook it up all the way because heaven forbid someone hops in the 8285R later could be me I'm not blaming anyone and next thing you know they've drugged the planter out of the barn without realizing it and it wasn't quite ready to go safety first I guess my beloved fighting Illini basketball seed number one by the way in the NCAA tournament has a game today at 12:15 in the first round against number 16 Drexel. I'm halfway tempted just to call in sick at lunch and never come back. If they somehow lose by chance, which I don't believe is possible, I may just call in sick for the next week. Stay inside, never leave my rock. We'll go check in on the other 9460R and see how far along they are with servicing it. I would presume that their only holdup now is the oil getting in. It takes a lot of time. The price you pay for convenience. I showed up just in time to be able to get in the tractor, which is perfect for me because I'd rather be in the cab than outside. See what the verdict is. Good to go. All right. He said that he didn't calibrate the TCM on this one, so that's what I'm going to do. We'll just make a mess of the same spot we've been doing them all at.
reference point, calibrate, calibrate, finish calibration. And we're good to go. All five machines have been calibrated. It's really not that important for these three four-wheel drives to have a super accurate TCM calibration. They're doing a very rudimentary task, driving a straight line in the field. Not a precision task by any means, so it doesn't really matter that their lines are super precise. The planners are a little bit more important. I wouldn't say that it's completely necessary that they're a thousand percent accurate, because we don't do any kind of high management stuff like strip till or any of that jazz. It's nice to know though that your planter lines are in the right place, especially when you're using the RTK lines around the outside of a property to plant. Did I just park these three tractors in a row specifically to take a good thumbnail? Yes. Am I ashamed that I did that? No. Look how pretty they are. Plus the thumbnail is important guys. It's what made you click on the video. Okay, I saw the boss coming. We better stop messing around. He's not quite a fan of my monkey business. I need to decide how I'm gonna pull this in. Putting that 8R tractor there kind of disturbs our normal parking routine. I believe I can park two four-wheel drives together right there. I may back this one in right there. Jeff just showed up, so he's backing the other one in. We'll sit here and critique him. That's what you're supposed to do while you watch other people work. I think there's room right there for one, but the most room is definitely right there in the middle. We'll see what he chooses to do. I'll probably disagree with it just for fun. Okay, he's choosing to back it in. Can't disagree with that. I think I'm gonna have to try pretty hard here to be disgruntled. Time to get some food and watch some basketball. Talk to you guys in a little bit. The Illini made quick work of their game today. We're gonna try and squeeze a little bit more into our schedule and change the oil on these two 997 mowers. It's really not that important, but it's better than doing nothing. The battery's dead in that one. Let's try this one. The battery was dead in one of them, so dad's jumping that. I'm gonna go ahead and make the journey over to the red barn so we can change the oil on this. If I would have done this this morning, I would have frozen to death. It's actually not bad out this afternoon. Got a little bit of a flat tire. It's maybe just low. It doesn't take long in these small tires to get a lot of pounds in them. That was fast. Two down. Three out of four done. And there's four tires. The servicing didn't take long, but we only have about three, so it would take the diesel fuel. Might as well fuel it off to start the year. I don't think we'll be doing any mowing soon. It doesn't have to be prepared. I really need to take a leak. I know this doesn't hold very much fuel, and when it's still kind of cool outside, I don't exactly trust the automatic shutoffs on these pumps. Good to go. I just got started. Like a little go race. This was a much more enjoyable ride to this barn than that mower. Now both of Dad's mowers are ready to go for the season. Changing the oil on them was pretty unnecessary. Gave us something to do this afternoon though. It looks like Dad has found another little tractor to change the oil in. The list keeps growing. I'm getting what will be the sixth thing we've changed the oil in today. That's a pretty productive day. These tractors are zippy little things. He left us just enough room to squeeze this in. I don't think he did that on purpose. 
changing some oil. You need to get to about 20 quarts. Maybe a little bit more. Set the air compressor on its control panel. Not sure what's wrong with it. Just finished up. It held a little bit over 18 quarts. No complaints, so we're gonna go put this away. Locking the barn up, these tractors are done. Alright everyone, that's gonna be it for today. We were kind of all over the place, but that's pretty much the norm for working around the farm here. You kind of jump around from project to project, and a lot of times I really don't know what the next part of the day holds. We ended up with three inches of rain over the last week, so our ground is what I would call saturated. Over the next week, I just checked the temperatures and the forecast. We're looking at 60 degree highs, 40 degree lows, two days with a chance of storms. If we miss those, I'd say beginning of April, maybe second week of April, we have a very good shot of getting in the fields and planting. In the next video, I'm highly anticipating that we'll be getting the planters and field cultivators out of storage. Now, those implements will need a tiny bit of fine tuning before we can even really consider taking them to the field. Shouldn't take more than a day to accomplish all that on our list. As always, everyone, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate your support. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.